you guys only know what I tell you. There's even more stories that you guys don't know that you will never hear. But the stuff that I've been through, the adversity that I've been hit with, the things that I've overcome, it helped me find out who I am. I'm gonna show a random clip of a YouTube video a couple years ago. But bro, this is 2018, man. You gotta look out for you. You see how different I looked in and out? I'm, I'm in the best position I think I've ever been in in my life. Coaches have very, very big egos. One thing you guys don't know about college sports, it is very ego driven. The players have egos, the coaches have egos. And if you rub somebody the wrong way, it could be over for you. What's happening YouTube, man? It's your boy Pride and today, I'm back with a brand new video. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys what have I learned ever since I retired playing D1 ball, ever since I hung them up, what's been going on you know, in my life, what have I learned? Things that I can teach you guys. Now, whether you're a current athlete in high school or in college, it all remains the same. The message will all come together at the end. I'm gonna just break down a lot of different topics. Now, I tell you guys, anytime you guys DM me, you know, as long as it's constructive, I'll respond. I've gotten so many DMs from middle schoolers, high schoolers, even college athletes telling me like they're losing motivation, they don't wanna play. What should they do? What happens if they stop playing? You know, they need help. They don't know what they wanna do in their life, that type of thing. This is the perfect video for you guys. I've been there, done that, and I'ma just tell you, I'm, I'm on the, the next lane, you know what I mean? So let's say you guys are in a car, right? There's two exits on the highway you can go. You can keep on playing, or you can stop playing, okay? You can catch my metaphor. I'm on the other side. I've been there, been through it, and I'ma tell you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly, and obviously, you know how I am. I come on the camera, I just tell you my truth, I make sure it's constructive, and you do what you want with the info. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> One thing that I definitely learned is that ball is not life. You know, shout out ball is life though to basketball, but this is what I mean. When you're growing up as an athlete, you hear that line all the time, ball is life. You know, they, I don't know where I would be without football. I don't know where I would be without basketball. <sighs> that is a very bad mindset to have. Ball is not life. If you truly believe ball is life, at some point in your life, you are going to get hurt. Not like physically, you know, I don't wish that on nobody, but mentally, because it's not. There's so much more to life. And once I stopped playing, I seen it. I was one of you guys at one point, I would wake up, eat, drink, sleep football but once you get to higher levels you realize a lot of people are like bro i don't want to do this this is i don't really care for this this is not my passion and you hear it all the time you hear those people that go they go pro right they retire at 37 38 years old and they don't know what they want to do they're stuck i've been telling you guys for years ever since i've been on youtube it's cool if you like to play ball but find a hobby other than that. Find something that you're passionate about because at some point the game is going to be taken away from you. You're not gonna be able to play it forever. And if you don't have another hobby, another passion, you are going to have to do a lot of soul searching and you don't wanna do that when you're 40 years old and you don't know what you like besides dribbling a ball when you're not good enough to do it. So that's the number one thing I definitely learned. And I started to figure it out as I was about to leave school. But you guys see me on my socials, you guys know what I like to do. You know what I mean? I found multiple hobbies. I'm passionate about a lot of different things, about helping people, a lot of things that I like to do. So just make sure you find yours because if you get too committed to the game, it won't end too well for you. The second thing that I learned, which kind of goes hand in hand is when you're playing, you don't really have time to pursue your passions, okay? So let's say you start playing and you already know on the side you love fitness or you love writing when you're out playing you're at the division one level or you're in the league everything is in the back burner and a lot of people don't like that i for one didn't like that i don't like the fact that from 5 a.m to 9 at night i'm on the clock doing one thing all day and my mind is always racing i'm always thinking about other things that's one thing that bothered me and it makes you believe that that's all there is out there is football that's all there is is basketball and the coaches they kind of get you in that same mindset and it takes a lot to break from it you know what I mean? You have to understand when you stop playing, you'll have all the time in the world to pursue your passions, okay? So if there's something else you wanna do, once you stop playing, you have the time for it. That's what I learned. Because when you're playing, it's like they take all your free time away. It's football, 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 or basketball, basketball, basketball. 
But one thing I definitely learned is when you take a step back from the game, you have so much more time now to accomplish so many different tasks. Another thing that I learned since I stopped playing is now you really have the space and the free time to create new relationships and rekindle old ones. For example, I went to college eight hours away. You guys know I'm from Illinois, you know, Illinois boys. Stand up, the Midwest is the best in the world. And I went to a college in Missouri. I was eight hours away. You know what I mean? I didn't talk to my family often. I didn't talk to my friends often. I told you guys when I first got to college, I was very, very depressed. I would go like days, weeks, months without speaking. There's a lot of relationships that you lose because your friends in high school, they go off to college. They're off different states. You don't talk to them. You're so focused on football. Your time is taken every day. My family, I would talk to them, you know, we FaceTime here and there, but it's not the same. My best friend, so now you guys know uh, Solomon, he's been in multiple videos. This is going to be cut out anyways. I got the power edit. <laughs> Give me your no. <laughs> I would talk to him from time to time, but he was kind of going through the same thing. You lose a lot of relationships. You find out who really rocks with you when you move away and now you're in a completely different state. And the only people that you're surrounded by are the same 60, 70, 80, 90 men, you know, including the staff every day. And the coaches, I don't want to say they brainwash you because that's like an evil word, but they push the narrative that, you know, this is all you know. This is your family, such and such. You know, these are the people you're going to be with. And it's like they kind of force it on you so you lose a lot of relationships with other people and then you come home for thanksgiving or winter break and you want to pick up where you left off but these people moved on with their lives you know what i'm saying you don't talk to them for five six months and then hit them up like yo let me slide and get a, a plate of macaroni with some turkey they're gonna ignore you you know what i'm saying <laughs> so <laughs> one thing i learned is you definitely got the time to rekindle a lot of relationships now me when i was coming up it should be no surprise. I've always been a popular kid. I always had a lot of acquaintances. I don't have a lot of friends personally because I don't let too many people in my circle. But it's like when I went to college, it was like, man, like there's so many people from back home. Like now I don't speak to like period that I would talk to in high school every day. It's just that once you move away, things change. You know, it'll be very hard to rekindle those relationships. But once you stop playing, you take a step back from the game. You got the time and chance to do that. One thing I definitely learned, and this to me might be the most important, coaches love to push the narrative, the message of, like if you stop playing now, if you give up now, you won't amount to anything. And I've heard this a lot. Now, don't get it twisted, you know, I'm, I'm 20 years old, I haven't made it yet, but at the end of the day, I believe I'm in the best mental state, physical state I've ever been in my life. I believe if I was still in college to this day, I wouldn't be what I am now, okay? Like, I've heard this plenty of times about me. I've heard coaches tell me this to my face. You guys, if you haven't seen the video, I dropped a video about how after a game that I wasn't at, my head coach came and yelled at me, belittled me for like an hour straight in a meeting. Blame the game on me, blame the team's failures on me, everything. I've already told this story. You can go watch that video. So I've heard it all. Now, I don't speak negatively on the college I went to. I don't speak negatively on the coaches, the players. I don't like throwing any negative energy out there in the world. Anybody that asks me about them personally, I still never say anything negative. I just tell my truth. But to this day, ever since I've left, they've only gotten worse. It's almost like not the Steelers situation per se, but it's like when you get rid of your most talented players, you can't expect to be better. They've only gotten worse. Now, I've been out of college for three seasons. They've only gotten worse. And I'm not happy about that. I have a lot of friends on that team, but it just shows you how things go. The narrative was pushed on me that I wouldn't amount to anything just because I didn't buy into that specific coach's methods. But it lets you know, coaches have very, very big egos. One thing you guys don't know about college sports, it is very ego driven. The players have egos, the coaches have egos. And if you rub somebody the wrong way, it could be over for you. So. I definitely was told plenty of times that I won't amount to anything and I did a lot of soul searching when I finally hung them up. I told you guys like, let me let me show you, I'll just show a random clip of a YouTube video a couple years ago. But bro, this is 2018 man, you gotta look out for you. You see how different I looked in and out? I'm, I'm in the best position I think I've ever been in in my life and I'm only getting better. I know I've been off of YouTube for a while but I always come back better. You see the difference? I'm only growing, I'm, I'm only leveling up. And I believe if I was still in college right now, I wouldn't have been doing that. Sure, on the football sense, I would be out of this world. 
but mentally, you know, spiritually, emotionally, which to me is way more important than football ever, I wouldn't be who I am. If I was still playing football, I wouldn't be in front of this camera right now. You wouldn't even know me. I wouldn't have been able to help the thousands of kids that I've already helped. And my videos aren't even jumping like that yet. So just know when they tell you you won't succeed, you'll be a failure, you won't amount to anything if you walk away from the game, don't believe it. You know, you just gotta keep praying. God's plan trumps every plan and you you really control your own destiny. Don't don't let anybody say that you won't be anything. That, that's the moral of that point right there. And the next thing I learned, man, since walking away is you can find yourself. Now, a lot of people, the younger you are, you may not understand that, but you think you know who you are and then eventually you're gonna go through something in life and you're gonna realize like you don't know who you are. For example, when I was, when I first got to college, I was 17 years old. Some of you guys are juniors in high school and are 17. I was 17 years old playing D1 football. I'm 20 now and I'm completely different mentally, physically than I was back then. I was thrown into the wolves off jump. It was sink or swim. I'm 17 around a bunch of 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 year olds every day, every single day. And I was still, I wasn't even done with puberty yet. You know what I mean? I told you guys a story of how I played. I was very good. I told you guys I was the best on the team at 17. But mentally, it's a completely different story. Sure, my body was prepared. Physically, I was doing everything. But mentally, I was in a completely different headspace. Now, why am I telling you this? I didn't know who I was at 17. I just grew up as the football player, the next first round pick. This is all I knew. But that's not me as a person, as a man. And you, sometimes you won't get to figure that out until you're able to take a step back, take a step away from the game. You know what I mean? I'm not the same guy. You know what I mean? A lot of you guys, you won't know who you really are until you get enough time to actually go and see. I know what I've been through in my life. Most of you guys, you guys only know what I tell you. There's even more stories that you guys don't know that you will never hear. But the stuff that I've been through, the adversity that I've been hit with, the things that I've overcome, it helped me find out who I am. You get what I'm saying? And you won't find yourself until you go through that type of stuff as well. And sometimes you have to be away from the game to see that, which I did. The next thing I learned, bro, is you're injury free. My body feels great. You know, when you're playing a college sport, you're accustomed to feeling injuries all the time. You're accustomed to waking up and your body's hurting. Right now, I feel good. Like, I'm literally in the best shape I've ever been in. I told you guys, this year, I wouldn't even say this year because I started to slack off a tad bit. But in like five months, first five months of the year, I lost like 100, 110 pounds. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. I wouldn't say I'm in football shape. Like if I was forced to go play a game today, i probably get gassed, I won't cap. Because I'm not in football shape, but I'm in good shape. You get what I'm saying? Your body's going to feel so much better when you're away from the game. You know, which should be no surprise, but it's one thing I definitely learned. And my body will thank me once I'm 50, 60, 70. So if you're watching this old uh, old prodigy, you know, you're about 52 years old at this point, 32 years, you're welcome. <laughs> the next thing is, man, like you aren't alone. A lot of you guys feel like you're by yourself. Like I said, I get so many messages from people going through these type of things and they feel like I'm the only person they can talk to. In reality, I'm not. You know, there's people all across the world that are going through this. You got family you can talk to, friends you can talk to. Sometimes you have coaches you can talk to. My position coach when I was in college, like I said, best coach I ever had. I tried to talk to him sometimes, but you guys aren't alone. You know, when I went through this, I kind of was because I didn't really trust anybody, but you guys got me. You know, you guys got family. You're not alone when you go through this. You're only alone if you let yourself be alone, if you don't use your resources. So that's one thing I learned when I walked away from the game, once I rekindled those relationships, I started seeing people I used to never see. It's a whole lot of people in this world. It's a whole lot of experiences to be made, a whole lot of fun to be had. But you're far from alone. I know you'll get depressed, you'll get emotional, you'll get upset. But if you just keep praying, man, you got I guarantee everybody has people in their life that help them get through it. Another thing I learned, man, is that I really have no regrets. A lot of people ask me all the time, would I go back and play? Do I regret it? Et cetera, et cetera. I truly don't miss football. I don't regret my decision 
and this is me saying it and I haven't even accomplished what I want to accomplish. It would be easy if I was rich right now, famous right now, doing everything I set out to do, then I could just say I don't regret it. But I'm, I'm not even close. And I'm telling you right now, I don't regret it. And that's because I didn't make a half-hearted decision. I didn't just leave when the going got tough. I went through multiple seasons. I seen where it was going. You know what I mean? And I have no regrets. I don't miss it. I can watch football with my brothers and just watch the game. Now I just know more than the average person. You know, now I know a whole bunch of different players, a whole bunch of different setups. So it's almost like I'm an analyst when I'm watching the games. I have a different perspective, but I don't miss it. The concept of football I always told you guys, it's really stupid to me. Just That's just me personally. If I could go back, I would definitely play basketball over football for those of you that want to know. You guys, I'm already 6'6". And I was in college at like 315 pounds and I was my vertical was over a 30. So just imagine me being 6'6 and instead of 315, I'm like 230. Now I want you to just vision. Who who does that remind you of? And let's say maybe if I'm not 230, let's say I'm 260. At 6'6, my vertical would at least be a 40. If you take 50 pounds off of me, who who does that remind you of? And for those of you that have never seen me play, I'm not even going to gas myself up at basketball, but just know, sleep on me if you want to. I'm going to leave it at that. That's the one regret if I were to have one. I definitely would go back and hoop. One thing I also learned, man, in sports, they use a lot of like fear-based training. You know, they kind of get you in the headset or the mindset of like they make you afraid to fail. They make you afraid to walk away. They make you afraid to speak your mind because they will use all of that against you. Like I said, it's big egos over there, man. If you're the one outlier, the one different type of guy, they will try to shake it out of you. They will try to break it out of you. They want everybody to conform to be one team, one machine, and that that's not good. Like I said, when I was in college, I was really the only guy that was different. You know, I was like the only guy that didn't bow at my coach's feet and they didn't like that. It's That's a lot of fear-based training. They want you to feel like, besides that team and that staff, that you have no one. They want you to be all in, committed, and when you're not, they make you as if you're the bad guy. So you have to be prepared for that. They're going to try to scare you, but you have to, you have to be mentally strong. You have to understand the business. You have to understand that you don't need them. You know, sure, they may be paying for your education, but you're a grown man. Women watching this, you're a grown woman. You don't need them. So just make sure you, you stay strong when that type of stuff comes because it's coming. And then another man, the last thing I learned, bruh, since I retired is I grew up. Like I said, I came in at 17, I'm 20 now. And you can go back and watch my old videos, bro, when I was 18, 19, and compare it to now. I've always been like a wise kid, but I didn't learn so much, man, about the game, about myself, about people that I would have never been able to learn if I was still in that system, you know, that that chain in the bicycle, that pawn on the chessboard just over and over again. I think, you know what I'm saying, I'm not perfect, I'm nowhere where I want to be, but I've grown up a lot. I'm still proud of the man I'm becoming. If you guys have been watching me since 2017, just look at the difference in me now. You see it. You know, I always tell you guys to hit me up on so If you look at my Instagram, obviously I have so many old pictures archived, but if you remember what I used to look like, it's a different day, you know what I mean? I'm always evolving, I'm always leveling, I'm always growing. And I truly believe if I was still playing ball where I once was, I wouldn't be the man I am today. So that's the whole point of this video, man. Just some things that I learned since I stopped playing my specific sport. As long as you do the right things, you can only level up. You're going to get better. You're going to see what life is really about. So don't be afraid to walk away from the game. I would just say, just because it gets hard or it gets tough, don't walk away. You have to walk away with a plan, with a vision. You know, you have to really believe in that. I'm not telling you to just walk away when things get difficult because it will be difficult. But if you do walk away, you do have a plan, you do have a vision, there's people out there who have done it. Now, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. You guys know my plans, you guys know my vision and the things I want to accomplish. But this is more of just to tell you what I've learned. I've been out the game for three years. It's just an update on me. I'm good, man. I can't complain. I'm chasing my destination, which is greatness. I'm, I'm feeling good. Listen, man, I, I really don't got much else to say, man. I told you guys I'll put my Instagram probably right here. You guys can go ahead and DM me any questions, man. I'm always here for you guys. You know that. So hit me up on Instagram. 
Comment down below what you want to see next. I hope this helped. But man, I'm going to keep my prayers up for y'all. And keep grinding. And pride.